Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to present our travel guide on what to see and do on a visit to Amsterdam. In this video, we'll cover a bit of background on Amsterdam and Holland in general, as well as tips on how to get around. Then we'll cover the top things to see and do grouped by regions of the city, the best nightlife areas, and even a few recommendations on day trip options into the nearby countryside. Okay, let's go. First off, let's start with a wee bit of background on Amsterdam and Holland. First settled as a small fishing village in the late 12th century, Amsterdam grew to become one of the world's most important trading centers and the third largest city in the world during the Dutch Golden Age of the 17th century. Fun fact about Holland, the very first stock exchange as well as modern capitalism as we know it were both created in Holland. Today, Holland is no longer a world power and Amsterdam is one of the smallest capital cities in Europe, but it remains Holland's largest city and its financial, cultural, and creative hub. The Amsterdam most tourists come to experience today is what they call the Old Town, a semicircle of six concentric canal rings which define the city as it was around 1850. The radius of that outer ring is only about a mile and a half, and most major tourist destinations, famous hotels, and nightlife areas are all located within this space. Given such a small area, you can get to almost anywhere on foot within 30 minutes, or even less by bicycle. And another fun fact about the Old Town area is that 90% of Amsterdam's population lives outside of it. So, it's a very pleasant way of getting around by walking or riding a bike. In fact, for us, Amsterdam is our favorite big city in Europe. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about getting around and the top things you want to see and do on a visit to Amsterdam. The city center is located a short 20 minute train ride from one of Europe's major airport hubs, Schiphol Airport. Trains from the airport and from all over Europe arrive to Amsterdam Central Station. It's the walking, biking epicenter of the city. Taxis and Uber are available, but roads are tight and crowded with bikes, so the easiest ways to get around are by the in-city tram lines, or better yet, by walking or riding a bike. Speaking of bikes, at 800,000 there are more bikes than people in Amsterdam. And by far, Amsterdam is the most cycle-friendly city in the world. So like they say, when in Rome, if you really want to immerse yourself in Amsterdam, the best way to do it is by bike. Most streets have separate bike lanes so you can get to wherever you want to go safely and quickly. Yes, locals can be a little bit reckless on their bikes, but as long as you don't make sudden turns and you use hand signals, you'll be fine. Finally, let's talk about the canals and boats. Yes, there are water taxis running around, but other than crossing the main river, boats are best used for doing sightseeing tours and nothing more. Now, let's get to covering all the main tourist sites you'll want to consider. There's a lot to cover here, so I'll move fast, and I'll also try to group them by the general areas around the city. But before I cover the sites, let me just suggest two of the must-do things in Amsterdam. Taking a walking or biking tour and taking a canal boat tour. Each will take less than two hours and will give you a much better feel for the city center area and where things are at. There are dozens of choices for bike tours, but perhaps the most famous is the yellow bike tour, and it's always a good choice. And for walking tours, we'd recommend the free yes I said free, walking tours by Amsterdam Company. Your only fee is the tip you give. For canal tours, there are many options for this as well, but assuming the weather is nice, we'd recommend a smaller open air boat as the views are much better without a roof. More on our suggestion for who to use for this later in the video. Now, finally, let's get to all those top sites you'll want to consider while in Amsterdam. We'll start with the central Old Town area. Many of the top sites are located here. First and foremost is Dam Square. 
Considered the center of Old Town, Dam Square is at the original point where the Amstel River was dammed in the 13th century, creating Amsterdam. It's edged by the Royal Palace, the National Monument, and the 15th century Lutkirk Church. And today, it's the hub for national occasions such as King's Day and the build up to Christmas. And it's a central gathering point for tourists with many street performers and knick-knack vendors walking around. The Royal Palace was originally built as a city hall in the middle 17th century. Then, in 1806, it was converted to a royal palace by Napoleon Bonaparte for his brother Louis, who he assigned as King of Holland. The National Monument is nearby and it's a 72 foot tall obelisk created in 1956 to honor the dead from World War II and subsequent conflicts. It's also the center of counterculture protests in the city. New Kirk, or the New Church in English, is actually one of the older churches in Amsterdam, constructed way back in 1408, when the old church became too small. Today, this church is no longer used for religious services, but for royal ceremonies, exhibitions, and concerts. Also in the central Old Town area are tons of canals. You can't miss them, and you can't talk about Amsterdam without talking about canals. All the canals you see were constructed during the city's expansion in the 17th century, when it became the third largest city in the world at the time. These canals weren't for decoration, but were functional waterways used for business and trade when Holland was a major sea power and the leading trading company in the world through their Dutch East and West Indies companies. With all those canals, you can't see Amsterdam right without taking a canal tour. They're a great way to get the best views of many of the merchant houses, bridges, and historical churches, along with all those cool houseboats. But which one should you choose? There are open boats and covered boats. There are hour-long cruises in small vessels all the way up to longer dinner cruises on large ships. But, as we mentioned earlier, our recommendation is for a smaller open top boat. You'll get more personal attention and you'll get much better views than closed top boats since you are typically looking up at a 45 degree angle to see all the best sights. Our recommendation on a provider here is flagship Amsterdam tours. Anything else everyone knows Amsterdam for besides marijuana and coffee shops? Well, of course, it has to be their red light district. It's still here, and it's still got its seedier side of window front brothels, peep shows, sex shows, and theaters. But do get there fast as it's slowly fading away as government pressure increases to phase it out. Fun fact, did you know that sex workers in Holland have their own workers union? Also, remember the new church I talked about earlier? Well, the old church is located here, yes, in the red light district, and it's the oldest church in all of Holland, constructed all the way back in 1213. After you've had your fill of the red light district, head nearby to a much less well-known site called Begenhof. It's a unique secret garden area that 99% of tourists would just walk right by. Founded in the early 14th century, the Bergenhof is an enclosed courtyard community established for religious single women. It's an oasis of peace with a green square surrounded by old style gabled houses. Here you can also visit one of Amsterdam's famous hidden churches built behind the facade of row houses. Such hidden churches were established after the Protestants took over in the 16th century and banned Catholicism. Catholics then could only conduct their religious activities in such hidden churches. Finally, just walk around and explore the old town. There are some really great side streets and small squares to discover, and you can make your walk into a game of finding some of the famous bridges as well as a few super skinny houses. 
fun fact on that, as taxes were paid by the size of your house frontage on the canal, some smart merchants designed their houses with a super small front facade that widened like a pie shape into the back of the house. Finally, for all you counterculture types, there's the Sex Museum and the Marijuana Museum. If you want to learn everything there is to know about this controversial profession or this controversial plant, check them out in the Old Town area. Next up is the center south area of Amsterdam. In this area, there are four or five cool sites to consider. And first is the Biggie, Museum Plein. There's more culture in this one square than you'll find in most other cities. It's also a center for outdoor events and celebrations all year, including an ice skating rink in the winter. On this square, you'll find the Rijks Museum, containing European masterpieces. It's the premier Dutch museum with a large collection of paintings from the Dutch Golden Age. Some artists you can't overlook are Rembrandt, Johannes Vermeer, Franz Hals, and Jan Steen. I think I said those right. Pro tip, access to their exterior garden is free. Also on the square is the Van Gogh Museum. Even people with little knowledge of art, like myself, have heard of Vincent Van Gogh. And this museum has the largest collection of Van Gogh's paintings and drawings in the world. Stedelijk Museum is a contemporary art museum here as well, and it's nearby another museum called the Diamond Museum. Stedelijk is dedicated to modern and contemporary art, from Van Gogh onwards, and its building is as much an attraction as its contents. It has a nickname called the Bathtub. The Royal Concert Hall is also here, and it's one of the world's best places to watch a classical concert. Pro tip for this, they have free lunchtime concerts every Wednesday from June to September, and there are guided tours offered for 10 euros a person. Nearby the Museum Plein is the Floating Flower Market. Since 1862, traders have been selling cut flowers and bulbs here from their houseboats. The houseboats are now replaced by barges, but it's a cool place to visit if you don't have time to get away from Amsterdam and see the real tulip fields. So we're in the Flower Market in Amsterdam, and this was established in 1862, and it's a floating market. So we're going to see all the beautiful flowers you can get to. A bit further south is Amsterdam's most popular park, Vondel Park. Take a stroll here to see how the locals really relax, and try it yourself at one of the multiple outdoor cafes dotted around the park. Fun fact. This park, established in 1865, is actually constantly sinking and needs to be renovated every generation to avoid being completely submerged in water. Another little known fact about the park is there's a Pablo Picasso sculpture in the park called the Fish. See if you can find it. Two other top sites in South Central Amsterdam are the Heineken Brewery Tour and Albert Cup Street Market. The Heineken Brewery Tour, called the Heineken Experience, is inside their 19th century brewery building, which is now a four-floor museum with multimedia presentations, large brewing vessels on display, and a weird 4D, you are the beer kind of ride. And naturally, there's a tasting bar. The iconic Albert Cup Street Market is a busy local street market operating in this area since 1905. It's the best known and largest street market in all of Holland. And now it's a pedestrian only street with more than 300 stalls with clothing, various ethnic foods, knickknacks, and more. <laughs> Ja, 
Outside of the central and center south Old Town areas, the next most popular area in Amsterdam is the western Old Town. And the most famous attraction here is undoubtedly the Anne Frank House and Museum. Dedicated to Anne Frank, a Jewish girl who kept a diary while hiding from the Nazi persecution. Since 2019, the only way to get a ticket for the Anne Frank House is online. Nearby this Anne Frank House and Museum is also the location where you can catch many of the canal tours I mentioned earlier. Very near the Anne Frank House is also the Jordan portion of town. It's distinct from the old town as it was originally created to be Amsterdam's working class neighborhood for immigrants. Here you can explore the tight streets and tiny courtyards, kick back at a little cafe, or poke around the many specialty shops and galleries in the famous Nine Little Streets area. Westerkirk, or the West Church, is Amsterdam's primary Protestant church dating back to the 1620s. It's an impressive site, and a fun fact is that Rembrandt is buried here. There's a memorial to him on the north wall of the church, but his tomb's precise location is actually unknown as he was bankrupt when he died. Next up are Amsterdam's top sites north of the river. This area is not as well traveled by tourists, but there are some cool sites worth your time. First up, they have free ferries across the river from just behind Central Station. And it's worth a trip just for the experience and for the views you see while you're on the boat. And pro tip, bicycles can be taken on these ferries for free. The two top destinations on the north side of the river are MDSM Wharf and I A Dam area. The MDSM Wharf area is a former industrial shipyard area that is now emerging as a trendy hipster neighborhood with street art, pool bars, and outdoor events and activities. The I Film Institute Museum and A Dam are also on this side of the river and are impossible to miss. The Eye is a museum, but also has a very popular restaurant with floor to ceiling views out across the river. A Dam Lookout is next door and was originally the headquarters for Royal Dutch Shell. Today, it has two restaurants on the rooftop, one that revolves, a rooftop observation deck, and a daring rooftop swing attraction. Finally, there's the eastern side of Amsterdam which gets the least respect from the typical tourist, but you have three great little sites worth a stop. The National Maritime Museum is perhaps the biggest, and it's east, but it's really very close to the main central station. The Maritime Museum shows how the sea has shaped Dutch culture over more than 500 years, and it's housed in the former Dutch Admiralty's main warehouse. It's an impressive building, with an inner courtyard covered by an immense glass canopy. Rembrandt's original house from the 1600s, now a museum, is also here. And so is De Gruyer Windmill. It's the tallest wooden windmill in Holland, and it's now converted into a brewery and restaurant. Pro tip, they offer short 20-minute brewery tours here also. Okay. With all those sites out of the way, maybe you were just one that says, to heck with the tourist sites, tell me about the nightlife. Well, let's touch on that here too. There's lots of nightlife options all over town from small pubs to coffee shops, to late night dance clubs and more. So just get out in a bit and explore on your own. But I will give you the four central areas for primary nightlife and dining. Light Spline is probably the biggest. Directly on this square are discos, cinemas, theaters, restaurants, and a casino. Amsterdam's most famous coffee shop, the Bulldog, is here, as well as Melkweg, a concert venue that hosts large tours like the Beastie Boys, U2, and others. In the summer months, this area is full of open-air restaurants and cafes, as well as many street performers. 
close second to Live Splide is Rembrandt Flying. With a similar feel, either one is a good choice. A third area to consider is actually the Red Light District. It is more than just sex shops and erotic shows, with a number of good picturesque bars of all kinds for all audiences. One of the most famous is the Sailor Bar, right in the heart of everything. Finally, the De Pipe area is an alternative, less touristy area for people who might want to experience a more authentic facet of the city with smaller bars and cafes and nothing but locals. I could finish up here, but I'm not done yet. One more section I want to give you is a bonus on some of the best day trips to consider in and around Amsterdam. Amsterdam's not a big city, and just outside town is the wonderful Dutch countryside. Two of the most famous choices to see it by bike or organized tour are Jean Zeeshans and Volendam. Less than a 30 minute bike ride from Central Station is the historic open air windmill museum town called Jean Zeeshans. I think I said that right. And it's a well-preserved historical village where you can learn everything you need to know about clogs and visit multiple windmills. There's even a boat ride if you'd like it. A bit further out, but still bikeable, is the small village of Volendam with its famous dike, traditional houses, and this is the place where you can dress like the Dutch for your Instagram pictures. One more cool little village is Mountain. It's definitely off the beaten path, but a great bike ride along the bay, heading out to the North Sea, to a little village with a unique medieval castle, swing bridge, and working water lock to explore. You can check out our mini guide on how to do this if you want to learn more. Just search Scottsdale Travel Chick, Mountain. Finally, a biggie in Holland during the tulip season is Kuchenhof Gardens. It's the world's largest flower garden and it's only open eight weeks a year from mid-March to mid-May. If you want to know more about this, you can also check out our dedicated travel guide just to Kuchenhof. Simply search Scottsdale Travel Chick Kuchenhof. Well, there you have it folks our ultimate guide to visiting Amsterdam. We hope you enjoyed. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below and please consider following us for more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Until next time, see you later.